morning, bienvenidos, guten tag, bonjour, buenos días. Um, thank you first of all to attend this workshop with optimizing customer engagement with multivariant testing. Uh, first of all, I would like to say thank to our promotion submit to invite me to be here. Also for Babel on my line manager who encouraged me to share this nice project. Let's start. First, I want to share some of my background. I am Alejandro Hernandez, working at Babel as an engagement CRM for three years. I studied marketing and business administration. I speak Spanish as a native language, English, German, and at the moment I am learning French, for sure with Babel. <laughs> I take care about the learners in Europe, LATAM, and also US market. By the end of this talk, you will be familiar how to increase velocity and decrease the force necessary to run and test with multivariant uh, on CRM campaigns. What is the best channel message on future to engage our user on the app? On the best stakeholders for you to work with with a develop this type of system and algorithm I gonna deep dive. For uh, our outline of this talk first, I gonna start with the context of how is Babel on our ecosystem a little bit, why we are here. The second part is the multi-arbanded system and the goals, how we set up. The third part gonna be the communication of the CRM on how we use this really nice tool on we finish with results on learnings. Let's start. Why we are here is the first question. First, uh, maybe you know that Babel is an e-learning app. We have on the app and also on desktop on our purpose as a company is create mutual understanding through language. We teach around 14 languages using diverse range of learning experience. And as a CRM engagement manager, my mission is to help the user to create and have it own reach these own goals. By delivering different type of learning experience, with different type of content through push notification in app on email. I'm gonna present a little bit how is the cost of the of Babel, what is our learning experience and how we help the user to create this habit. First of all, we have our lessons. The second one, we have our review that we have in four type of review when the user uh, did a lesson, he can review what they learned in four types, listening, a speaker, flashcard, like, flashcard is like memory card, on by writing type. This is our third learning experience in Babel by podcast, where the user increased the listening skill through different type of stories or talks we have from beginner level until the advanced level. Also, we have type of games. Just we want to offer this type of learning experience, not just learning or be super formal. They can review why they learn by through our three games and the funny uh, type. And now, this is one of our important uh, learning experience for Babel is Babel Live, where the user interact with other learners and also they receive some classes online with our teachers. And we finalize with type of magazine and videos that is 
really type of content where there is tips or some histories about the learning language or also the cultural um, articles with magazine on the videos is our influencers they are doing some videos giving tips or giving how they can improve their learning skills okay this is star like why we are here on how this big project started for Babel. As you see in the picture, we have an engagement week spot on the mobile. For us, in the user, after purchase, they are really engaged what they are doing. On, in the first week, they explore the app on going to see what, what is going on inside on the, our ecosystem. But after the first week, we see a decrease in an engagement in our mobile. For us, is as you see here in the graph, is really drastically on is how I start this project. We start with some questions in on this point. Is we want to address the three weeks retention after the first week they continue using the app. Babel as e-learning app is not just purchased on the user, have the aha moment super easy and fast. It's just they need to also invest time to feel like they are learning something on their, the goal, what they want, they achieve. We start with one of the question is how we could inspire our user to spend more time on the app. And the second one is how we bring this user from the inactive period that we see in the slide before here on this part, I'm sorry, uh, to really wake up and say, hey, why not continue with your learning journey? As we start with several hypotheses here, how we can address this type of challenge with a brainstorming. First could be making a test of the subject lines, also like different type of copy in our communication, like psychology design, like loss adversion to say the user, hey, don't lose what you learned before, come back to the app. Also social proof to say the users, why not these other learners achieve this goal doing this type of learning experience or this type of um, activities or cognitive load just to say the user, hey, here is your next step and they don't have to think, okay, what, what I have to do in this big ecosystem we have in Babel. Could be also seasonal campaign, products on versus people partners, or learning experience, as I was explained before, podcasts, review, games, stories, or content topics. It was really a lot of ideas, really nice ideas, but come more questions here. Like, okay, <laughs> is so much test in a short term? On one of the more questions we add on this uh, scenario, how, how we could test all these variables, or how we could get clear results without mixing all these uh, tests, how to impact also a long term our users. We know they are engaged in the first week, but when you want to feel like the app is working for you, we need they spend time a long term. On the same, the two questions I proposed before, like how we can inspire to spend more time, the learnings on the app, on how bring the user from this inactivity period. This is the first part. And the second part is type of like the solution. That's how we address these all five questions when we start to create a system. I first, the name of the system is the multi-armed bandit. Through this episode, you're gonna understand why is this name. But first, I'm gonna give you a like definition 
dictionary or Wikipedia uh, definition that is an algorithm system to optimize with sequence of message of a really big variance compared best toward the intended interaction of the user in the app on evaluate how the user interact also with our message and make them the more relevant. We have in Babel, because it's a little bit type of comp complexity of the system, in Babel we are using an example to explain to our stakeholders they are not really involved on this system and I'm gonna start to make a little bit story. Let's imagine you are a gamer. You are a gamer and you want to go, you go to the casino. When you see this type of slot machine when you can put some coins and you get a reward. The reward here for you is, okay, I want money back. But when you are in the casino, there is a lot this type of machine. This, all these machines have different probability. Some of them you see, okay, that could be the winner or the most probability to get me more money back. The other ones don't give you the same amount of money, just the same amount of, of winning, sorry. Or some of them have no probability you win. Here, there is three important concepts is your goal is maximize the reward over time. You want to go to this machine, like you put the coin and you can play often and often and get more money. But the question on this, all the, the story or when you are in the casino is, okay, how can I find what is the best one? How can I say this one is what I want to play and I'm gonna be rich after playing this type of slot machine? Could be like 10 games at the same time in 10, in 10 different machines, or 100 games, or 1,000 games. But who want to play 100 games or 1,000 games at the same time and check what is, what is give you the best reward or more money on, on this case? For this, this is not the best strategy. You want to find as fast as possible, on soon as possible, which one is the winner. Here, when you are going, for example, to see, okay, I'm gonna play 50, 10 games in different 10 machines, or 100 games in 100 different machines, this is the exploration phase. And you want to check which one is the best performing. But, for sure, you don't want to spend time, money to do this, when you want to know which one is really the best now. For this dilemma, we use an algorithm, the name is Thompson Sampling. Uh, at the moment, I don't gonna deep dive on, on these algorithms, but is the algorithm helping to you to find this slot machine to say, easily say, here is the, machine you have to play and you're gonna get the reward you want. Um, if you are interested on the Thompson, Thompson sampling, one year before, one of our colleagues, the, he is part of the data scientist, they here explain this algorithms and I can share the, the link when you go into deep dive, what is this? But, Relating to the real world, after this example, on what is what is going on, for sure is the slot machine could be an email message. And for us in Babel, the winner is not well, is money issue also, but in terms of engagement is learning minutes and click rate, or like push trigger to send and push notification on our user learn more time on the app on open rate. You can also use in online ads where the winner could be user clicks or buy your product or could be that 
what the winner you want to set up. Or oh, a recommendation algorithm, this time of e-commerce, <coughs> sorry, the, the e-commerce uh, platform, uh, according to your behavior of the purchase, they recommend you other type of articles. Also, the winner is the user following your recommendations. Why we 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 start to working with these bandit algorithms is the name we put for them for for this all this system. The first one I want to make a little like comparison between A/B testing on what is how is working bandit. We have, for example, four variants you want to test in your communication or in your channel. You see the four variants, the best performing is the C one. The winner you roll out, but you don't know if this winner is going really to long term continuing engagement, the users. Here, you going, for example, to implant, you see, sorry, the winner is not performing anymore as you was expecting when you add two more variants to test. You need to create four, three, two, uh, two tests plus the old one on again to retest on this is taking a lot of time on also. In the, in the case of uh, A-B test, the loser you don't gonna use anymore. What happened with the bandit system? <coughs> Sorry. What happened with the bandit system? Same picture, same scenario. You have four uh, tests or four ideas you want to test, but you see the winner is the C, is the one of making more conversion of the winner, what, what you start depend of all your goals. But the A on the B on the D part of this bandit continue make a conversion, even it's not the same proportion of the winner, but they are still searching what is the user they are engaged with this. That means you don't really delay the loser's variants. The loser variants are still working until they find what is the properly target. The, here, on the second part, when you say, okay, why not to increase the variance on this on this testing, it's really easy to put to put on the system, on the um, algorithms, when the algorithms automatically start to find what is this kind of user that are engaged with this communication. That means every time the bandit is in the exploration phase, but when you get a really winner you start to explode this winner to say, okay, this is what is the variant more, they are more engaged to our user to come back to the app. But something we realize on, on the COVID time, for example, is user really change the behavior of the learning uh, path. Sometimes they like podcasts in the summertime was performing really well, and this was our best variant, but in the winter, they start to more may focus on the grammar or review or lessons. Automatically, the bandit system start to calibrate which is the best for each user, depend of the season or depend of the behavior on the app. How is the general mechanisms of this all the system? I'm going to explain how it's working. We have three concepts. The first one is the trigger. It's the number for us. We define as the number of days of inactivity. You can define for other type of trigger. The second one is the reaction period. I don't know you see here. We have two scenarios for this reaction period. The trigger, uh, you send the communication, could be an email or a push notification in app. 
we have the first scenario could be success on the user come back to the app and start to spend time there. But the second one is on fail when didn't convert on automatically this learning machine, as the name is banded, start to send another one that maybe could convert. This reaction period is the window you, f you wait the how, how long is taking the user to convert in terms of Babel is three, three days. We, is, this is the window. If it's success, they go into the next concept that is the call down. Is a time during which our previous selects cannot contact again. What we want with this call down phase or mechanisms is really not um, overlapping in terms of message. Also, we don't want to fatigue our user sending emails or push notification or be, okay, in state to engage, the user gonna say, I want to go out of this communication of Babel, I'm gonna be like, <laughs> no working. <laughs> That's these three important concepts for us on is how the general mechanism is working for the bandit. Uh, in terms of the goals, we start to say, okay, what we want to achieve with this oldest project in, in Babel. For us, it's important as a CRM, every time testing, we test everything, subject lines, banners, uh, copyrights, uh, also, one is the most important is continuously optimization on our test. The second is the adapt of the change continuously and make easy to retest, for example. The most important is involved personalization. In e-learning apps, we cannot go to generalize that everyone is learning as the same methods. Someone like more like podcast, you you feel like you are learning more when you are listening something or making really the homework on going to go the grammar or just watching a movie or reading. And this is this one of the important thing for us to wake up the user on oh they continue on the learning path with their needs and preference. At the end, our goal also is intend to complex audience, depend on the behavior on the app, or what is the, <coughs> sorry, on where is the, um, the type of audience combined with different type of countries, we, they have different behavior too, and this is what we want to achieve also with this uh, system. Okay, we are in the third part of this talk but how to optimize CRM communication through the bandit. First, I suggest really the collaboration between your data scientists and engineers. If you have, be friends with them. They are really nice. <laughs> they can explain you, I don't know, but as a marketer, I really not really techy in some parts when they really explain you with like, a kid of five years, you are how is working this type of algorithms or system. They are really in charge of building and maintain the system. Our CRM team is delivering consistent amount of communication. We set up the test. We know what is the strategy we want. The winner also we set up and create the outcomes on the next step. What is they gonna be? When you see there is an, an communication or an test is winning, you start to exploit this test because you know this is the best one where you have more probability to convert the user. We make like type of recipe right, to follow how it's working that. I try to do that a little bit digestible. We have really large of message templates that mean 
we have around 50 different type of test. Could be subject lines, could be copy, could be type of learning experience. As I say, the second uh, part of the recipe is the trigger. I explain number of days of inactivity which with the user are uh, the behavior of the user on the on the app. The channel is really important. I want here to like deep dive a little bit for us is the user is not just uh, having the communication of the engagement but also the upsells like prolong your subscription or offer this other type of future we have in Babel, like a Babel Live. On the user age, the four part of this ingredients of this recipe is the success criterion. What for you gonna be the conversion rate of, the, of this system? In Babel, we have like the learning activity in three days after the message. This type, oh, also we have open rate for push notification on click rates for uh, emails on unsubscribe rate is important as a health metric. As we are sending so much communication, we don't want really to fatigue the users. And the last one is learning minutes. How much, how many time they are really spending time on our app when they feel they are learning something. And the most important to see what is the result is a control group. The control group is a percentage where the user don't receive anything. It's our baseline to compare. How we decide for the audience? We have inactivity of the user first. For sure, the user opting in our communication is one. On have not be contact for us for X days. In terms of the have not be contact for us in X days, we have one week of the window not to send anything to our user, even his, he convert on the the communication was successful, we start to them two weeks, but if it's not success, in one week, gonna send our next um, email or push or in-app. How does the architecture on the data flow of the bandit, as I say? First, we have the app events. We, this, all this behavior is taken for a snowflake. This is our like, matrix of data. Uh, define the audience on target on control group is important. On this part is where our system start to randomize the, all the tests you have. We trigger with the IPI, they send through MRC is our CRM tool the message or the push notification. At the end, we track the campaigns and we get the report which one is the best or which one uh, perform for different type of segments. Okay, uh, yeah, we are in time. Uh, here is the last part of the results and learners. Learning, sorry. The outcomes here. In this year, we send more than five million emails on push notification. We see like eighteen percent uplift in our click rate. That's mean we are personalize our communication according to the need of the user or learner. we decrease 25% the user don't spend time in the app. Even here is the word decrease for us is positive because this means we reactivate this user was in dormancy or in the zombie area of the, of the app. Additionally, also we decrease the user done learn, done learn, sorry, less than 10 minutes. In Babel, 
where our expertise and teachers say if you want to learn a language through our app, you need to spend at least 15 minutes like every day. Also, we uplift 18% in the fraction of user that learn between two and four hours. This is the average for per month. And also, additionally, 11% in the fraction of users that learn more than four hours. It's incredible when we got this type of result because we can say our hypothesis to make this system is working on engage our user on the app on happy customers. That's more revenue. Okay, the learnings of this. We see undifferentiation by age, potential personalization. That means like our younger users, they like more to engage a learning with the podcast or with the games. Also, the middle age between 35 and 50, they like more review on the lessons. And the older ones like to be on the desktop. Mails with personalized link typically is quite successful. It's important to send the user where they want to go and when they have to go. Most of the app, they have so many features on the user is losing on this ecosystem. If you really link to them, what continue, you're gonna get more engaged on this part. Clear difference between the success of different males. We see what, which one is really success in terms of engagement on which one no. Even the other ones is not performing as the winner, but they still convert out some users, not in the same proportion, but at the end, if you take this all this uh, percentage of conversion, you get this type of result I was explaining in the slide before. We recommend on one of the learning is as a health metrics is the opt out rate or unsubscribe rate. It's as this learning machine is continuously sending communication in this phase where they are in exploration, we were really afraid to fatigue our user and say, okay, at, at the end, maybe they're gonna say, I don't want any more communication. You are super uh, stalker <laughs> with that. And no, this is not the type of learning I want. One, the fire one is push notification are more effective than email communication in general, especially in younger target. At the end, the learnings from Bandit. We have, I, I start with the phase, where for the A-B test, there is a production phase when you have to invest a lot of time. With the multi -R Bandit, they are continuously testing even the losers are there, but continue searching what is the best target for this communication. Introduce new options for the A-B test. You need again to think about new tests with this bandit is just to put in this system and they automatically start to search which is the best. Um, at long term, when you say, okay, you generalize in the A-B test, this one was the winner when you roll out for all your target or your, your audience. When it's not possible to detect, okay, what happened with the other ones, they was really convert with these losers variants. With the bandit, detect automatically on the traffic change according to the season, as I was say, or according to the behavior of the user. Yeah. And statistical guarantees, 
there is an error in the A-B test in terms of the same example I was explained. We cannot generalize like everyone like the same learning path of the same behavior. That the multi r bandit is really going to roll out the winner if they get the 100%. This is the reason in this system, we don't have really like a just this winner when we roll out this test or this communication every time they are exploring or collecting more information for us to personalize, to create new segments, also to address this needs of our user or learners when they feel that they are learning a language and get the goal they want. For the conclusion, as a CRM engagement team, it's important, or if you are a marketer, like cross-functional collaboration is the important. Data scientists and engineers team gonna be your best friends if you want to, to do this. <laughs> uh, for sure, the copywriters on design help us to roll out this big project. CRM managers and product managers Product managers give you the input, how is the behavior of the new features are inside of the app. As an engaged user with multivariable testing, we had several conclusions. Propose if you want on your on co in your company or where you are working, a multivariable system. It's really effective. Discuss the type of algorithm to solve this problem, which one is the best. We are uh, in, in Babel, our data scientists and engineer uh, propose us the Tom, Thompson sample and is working really good on performing. Set up your winner and goals. What is your conversion rate? What is your goal with this, with this, with this system? Check if the CRM tool has an API to connect the algorithm to the tool and deliver all the communication. And one of the most important things is don't generalize in engagement communication. Everyone for different type of apps, they have different behaviors on more in the e-learning sector. And at the end, engaged user is again equal a uh, growth their revenue. Okay, that's all. Thank you.